Hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live on this July 6th, the second day after Independence Day, mm-hmm. um, to bring you some podcasts. And this is for feedback. So this episode is just me and Karen talking about the things that you wanted us to talk about, the, you know, the whatever you left us to say on um YouTube, like comments on our website, the votes in the poll, um, the emails, the voicemails. This is all about you, and um, that's what we're here for. So we hope that you are uh, that's what you want because that's all we got to do today. Um, of course, the official weapon of the show is oh, yeah, and the unofficial sport, but about and bullet ball extreme, extreme, extreme. Um and uh we we're doing this show in the afternoon because we had a cool morning. It was mm-hmm. fun. A lot of fun. Um went for a hot walk, and I don't mean that's because I was so sexy walking. I mean it was hot as uh, fuck outside. Yes, it was at 9 a.m. The was hell nine. is this? And I don't think I could have walked at 10, guys. I don't think I could have walked at eleven. I think nine yeah. was the yeah, absolute that's latest. Why it was like eight. I was like, You wanna walk now? Mm-hmm. I was like, it might be hot today. It was so hot. Uh, but we did the walk, and then um, we had some friends coming in from out of town. Uh, Keith from Keith and the Girl was here. His girlfriend lives here, Liz. And so we kind of did a double date with them, I guess you call it. Mm-hmm. We went and went to Penn's Mechanical. Oh, that was so I'm sure we'll talk fun. more in detail about this on a future episode or whatever. Yes. But that was fun, and then played video games, and we got some Max barbecue and and it was a fun time a lovely couple uh and but because we had that schedule we couldn't do a show till we couldn't do three guys on anything so right um this is the earliest we could get this show done for you so that's what took us along Mm -hmm. and tomorrow we may or may not have a show we we have friends coming in from out of town again Mm -hmm. so uh we'll see how we feel tomorrow busy (laughs) yeah but you know what it's it's dope I love it. Um, Podcast has got to have a life too, y'all. Yeah, we got to. Now, that being said, feedback. We're going to get into it, all right? Um, The first thing I want to do, though, is give a shout-out to everyone who donates to the show. So you can uh, go to the website, theblackguywhotips.com. You can look on the right-hand side. If you're on a phone, turn it sideways. And there's like a, hey, would you like to support the show? You can choose any denomination, any uh, however often you want it to be. You can say, I want to give a dollar a month. You can say, I want to give five dollars uh, one time only. You can, you know, uh, mm-hmm. whatever you want to give. We don't make a point of telling how much anyone gives, but we do want to give you a shout out because that's all you get for this is a shout out. This is not mm-hmm. like premium. This is mm-hmm. no extra shows, no bonuses. Mm-hmm. And so we definitely appreciate those people. So we about to show y'all some love mm-hmm. right now. Do. May I have your attention? You are now listening to Charlotte Stone, Rod, and Karen. We welcome the good folks who tied to the Black Tiger Tips. Today's a new day. That's right. Yes. New day, new pay. Let me give a shout out to Zach from the Living Corporate Podcast. Appreciate your brother. Lauren C. Christoph R. Preston, aka Team Dro from the Slang of Ages Podcast. Tanisha G. Dotstra J. Uh, Celeste VB. Uh, Adam S. Mariano. Uh, Tyrone M. Cola. Dorothea S. Joe H. Uh, Jason F, Waste Bees by Sura, Michael Irvin, the Playmaker, and Chriselle B. Thank you, everybody that took the time out to put a little change in our pockets so we could have some money to play pinball when we go out to Pins with Kinda Bowling. So mm-hmm. thank you. We also got some five star reviews. Yay! Yay. Uh, bestest and very consistent podcast. Still listening, still a fan. I love the new weapon of the show. Could you explain Bullet Ball and Bullet Ball Extreme? Thank you, Rod and Karen from Unrelaxed Missy. Well, Unrelaxed Missy, you are in luck because almost every single year, mm-hmm. uh, or at least every couple of years, 
we actually do a bullet ball episode of the black guy who tips. We do. The last time we did it was um, for our live show last year. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can check out the episode. um, If you just need an explainer, Um, you can check out episode. uh, Give me one second. Uh, uh, Boom. Check out episode. I mean, 1797. We did it. Um, there that was in uh 2018. We did it again in 2021 at episode 2271. Bullet Ball 2021 was the title of that one. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of these um that we've done. Check out the title Bullet Ball and search the black guy who tips, and um, it it should come up just because I can't imagine anyone else is explaining these episodes. We did it episode in 2015, episode 1095 is Bullet Ball Redux. Like that we were doing it. That was the second time we explained it. Yes, the second time. Yeah, Bullet Ball explained this episode episode 1797. So there are multiple episodes where we have Justin on yeah. and we explain Bullet Ball all over again for the first time for a new audience. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we love doing it. That is the story. It is a, a tradition and we, I'm sure we'll be doing it again yes. as long as, you know, we are blessed to be here. So, mm-hmm. uh, but thank you for ask, asking Unrelaxed Missy. Stasia Sweet says, Grateful. The passion y'all have shines all throughout this podcast. Thank you both for the time you put into all the work you do. We the people are grateful. Thank you. Oh, thank and we're grateful you, for the people. Yes, we are. Side splitting reviews and Westro's wisdom. Why you need the blackout tips in your ears. This is from Patapioca, I think is how you say it, or Patapioca, um, who says, if you're looking for laugh out loud, funny reviews and pop culture insights, look no further than the Blackout Tips podcast. Rod and Karen's chemistry is undeniable. Their banter is hilarious and their takes on movies, TV shows, and even current events are spot on. But for me, the real gem is the coverage of the House of the Dragon. As a fellow fan who discovered the Blackout Tips a bit late to the game, I was bummed to have missed their earlier season recaps. But let me tell you, catching up on the House of, De- House of the Dragon reviews has been a blast. Their insights are sharp. Their jokes land perfectly, and they somehow manage to break down complex plot lines in a way that's both informative and entertaining. Even if you're not a diehard House of the Dragon fan, there's something for everyone to black out tips. Whether you want to hear Rod's hilariously honest movie reviews or Karen's witty social commentary, this podcast will have you hooked. I highly recommend adding the blackout tips to your queue, and it's quickly become one of my favorite podcasts, and I know it'll become one of yours, too. Wow. Oh, that's a- You put in the extra mile on that. Thank, Thank you, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, I feel so I feel loved. Lo- yes, I'm going to say I feel so loved. Oh my goodness, me too. I feel loved as well. All right. Without further delay, let's get into the episodes. All right. I'm gonna play a little music so I can know where to put some get our money later. Okay, so let me play this music so I know I put a commercial. <laughs> Hey, all right. We got episodes to talk about. Let's go to the first one, of course, which is our feedback episode. It's always the first one. I mean, what mm-hmm. else are you doing? Um, it was called The Rod and Karen Show. We got two comments on it. Uh, the first one is from... Apia. Apia, the recap show seems uh, 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 the recap show seems so fun that I almost considered watching the show, but realistically, there's no time for it. The Star Trek universe is our shit, and we are on the latest Discovery season right now. Okay, so she's talking about recap of the House of the Dragons. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, hey, look, we're not HBO don't pay us, Mm-mm. so I don't mean to be a. I'm not trying to be a dick about it. I'd love for them to shout us out, invite us to events treat us cool that would be really dope if they wanted to do something like that i would not turn it down but they don't you know it's not Mm -hmm. it's not a thing that we're doing for them so if y'all watch the show or not not my business Mm -mm. 
And if they was out here like, hey, we think we gonna take y'all to the premiere or some shit, I'd be like, well, damn, y'all, make sure y'all get HBO Max today. Today. Okay, code TVGWT. You know, I'll be, mm-hmm. be putting on, but yeah, for free? Nah, y'all go ahead and uh, do what y'all need to do. Ain't that the truth? Glad you're listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. EV says, I can't empathize with the Greens because BBL Chrissy is on that team, so fuck him and fuck them. The poll was, which side do you empathize with the most right now? And uh, 95% say the blacks. Mm-hmm. 5% say the Greens. I'm honestly shocked it's that high. And I don't, I just, and I don't think it's because of, I feel like it's a writing thing. They just haven't given people a lot of room to truly be on their side because they just don't really make a compelling case for mm-hmm. them. And so far they have not. They might yeah. later on, but so far, no. So unfortunately, I don't see how people got there. We got one comment on YouTube. Just Joe 510 says, dang, been so busy with working kids, BS, et cetera. Just now seeing y'all post it, twerking with Glee and my hoochie daddy shorts. Uh, really made my day. Love and blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Hoochie Daddy Shorts. It's that yeah. time of the year. Appreciate you. Gam- Let's get them gams yes. out. Eyes out, thighs out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's it for that episode. Let's get into the next episode. Uh, we got eight comments on the next episode, which was the debate, the Supreme Court, and Bronnie James. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just got to title them what the fuck you talked about. <laughs> Make it simple. Because that's what people want to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronan Raphael says, I just want to say thank you for your super aw- this super awesome episode. Fuck Trump. I hate him with everything in me. Thanks also for playing the Alan Lickman video. I had seen it one night but forgot to save it. Just in case no one has said that today, y'all are the best podcast in the world. Maybe that'll be the title of the episode. Thank you. I would like to apologize to Appia and anyone who has responded to my comments in the past. I'm so used to receiving alerts from pages that I have accounts on. Whenever someone responds to a comment of mine that I forget to check back here. It's not like I'm trying to ignore you. I'll try to check back moving forward so I can respond to any potential questions or comments on the comments from my black, the fellow Black Outs family. Abby says, sorry, now I didn't replay to you, but posted a new comment, reply to you, but posted a new comment. Sorry, seven o'clock here in old Europe. And that's because she said, okay, let's test this new Raphael. Where did you visit in Germany? Did you like it? And he hasn't replied back, so it looks like he failed the test, Abby. He failed the test. He was supposed he to come back. He might get back to you three days from now. Yeah. Sean says, skip it if too long. All right, skip it. Uh, the next one is EVE. No, I'm just kidding, Sean. Come on. Uh, when I was in high school in 1992, my school basically last minute announced that everyone should, re- should head to the gymnasium for a speech from Dan Quayle. They handed Ooh, Carl. Dan Quayle. Ooh. Yeah, that's been a minute. I Ain't think it was, the guy who spelled potato wrong. Oh, no. Can y'all remember that there was a time when someone spelled potato wrong and we made them a laughing stock to where they weren't supposed to be vice president? Can you even imagine that time what right is, now? What a days. That was a scandal. It was a joke. That was a scandal, right? Every night, the people that do nightly, the night shows that that, that tell was America to go to sleep, that dude. they were clowning him and calling him stupid because he put an E on the end of potato. A mistake that I don't find that egregious. It's just one of those like, uh, nah, that's we all have words we fuck up. Like, listen, if I was vice president, they said Rod Spell Restaurant. Well, guess I'm. Don't trust me with the nuclear codes because it's going to be a struggle. Uh, Certain words I just struggle with. But anyway, they handed cardboard bush slash quail 92 posters to everyone on the way on the way in. A huge chunk of the students tore their cardboard in the letters that spell Clinton or Perot. So many students tore up their signs that they couldn't get a clean crowd shot. I had one teacher tear into me and some other students for being disrespectful. Well, why the fuck is it a campaign stop at a fucking school? Right. They should not be doing that in a school. They shouldn't be telling that none of the kids can vote. Right. The kids can't vote. And it's just a photo op for them anyway. Um, and I and I feel the same way if it was a president that I fucked with. It just feels like a weird thing to be like separation of church and state, but not separation of politics. Like it's one thing to go talk to a school, but to essentially hold a rally so you can use the kids as props is I don't know. Anyway. That's whack. Yeah, it's it was I guess it's just life, but whatever. I came back. It came back that they should have informed us that we didn't have to attend the propaganda rally with the halfway. Okay, see, see, so I wasn't, my instincts weren't wrong. A week later, when it came out that Republicans hadn't paid for the using the facilities, I got the teacher to apologize to me. 
Uh, long story short, I would say if you skip, start below here. Long story short, Republicans use deceit to fake support from people that hate their shitty party with good reason. It's not just a Trump thing. Yeah. All right. So they went there, used the school, and then didn't pay y'all. Didn't pay not y'all, but didn't pay the school system, basically. Mm hmm. Just gonna get that picture. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I, I don't. It's not hard for me to believe that that barber got played. It, it is hard for me to believe that he had no idea. Right. So I can draw that distinction of like, yeah, you thought this might be a little thing or you thought this would go over better yeah, or well. No, you thought it was going to be no big deal. Yeah, you didn't realize they. it was all just to use you and your spot to be like, black people, we're done. Mm -hmm. And now you got to be the one living in a community, living with that stigma. And mm -hmm. shout out to the brothers that said, I ain't get my hair cut that no more. Right. And guess what? You're going to have a percentage of them that... It's gonna be like, okay, he apologized, but you're gonna have something that's like, fuck you forever. I will never yeah. go back there again. He knew enough. I'll put it that way. He knew looking enough at that to contract, apologize. He, well, looking at that contract, he knew enough to know that that was some Donald Trump shit in my mind. Yes. I'm if, sorry. Yeah, yeah. If that was a real contract, yes. Yeah. There's, there's no excuse then. I, I don't, I don't want to hear it because I, I would know not to sign that. And sometimes I have to be that simple with stuff because I try to be forgiving and understanding of people in all kinds of situations. But then there has to come to a point where you're like, I would know, and I'm not saying I'm a genius. I would, if, if they sent us the blackout tips contract and the front said Donald Trey Trump for president, future of uh, this contract would be referred to DJ, DJ TP or whatever. I'd be like, I, nope, no. I am not signing that bullshit. Uh, so see, EV says, since I've been eligible to vote, I've never let a debate sway my decision on who I would vote for. Am I a little concerned that Joe Barton, Biden isn't as sharp as someone younger than him? Of course. But I will still vote for him and I won't feel bad about doing it. That man could pull his pants down on live TV, swing his balls from side to side, and still vote for him. Agreed. It's either him or Dump and not and a non-vote or a third-party vote is a vote for Dump. So Joe Biden it is. Agreed. It's that simple to me. It's that simple for me too. I saw that debate. I would not like I wouldn't be hurt or concerned if he stepped down and Kamala took his place or something. It wouldn't bother me at all um, because I'd still know how I'm going to vote. Mm -hmm. And I think Kamala is just as qualified and has all kinds of positives in ways that people refuse to admit. The problem isn't me. Mm -mm. The problem, I think, is going to be a the lot of people populace. that would vote for Joe Biden because he's an old white man. Yeah. Regardless of how he looks, they would still vote for him. And I think a lot of those people still would. Poll numbers don't mean shit to me. I really think a lot of this is to get us in a panic situation where you just try to replace him with someone who's not Kamala, who doesn't have access to his money. It makes a great story, great media shit, but it's not good for the country. Um, and it's not good for Democrats. And mm -hmm. then I think anyone that's not Kamala is definitely getting challenged in court. Yes. And this Supreme Court, I think, would expedite that case and be like, that that person can't run because they weren't on the ballot in any of these states. Joe Biden was the on the ballot during the primary. Right. He's the only one that can be the, the that's what I think will happen. Mm -hmm. And I think we will be fucked as a country if that happened. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope if it's, if somehow it's Kamala is the one that it works out fine. But I also am totally fine with it being Joe Biden because I actually think that night was a bad night. I don't think that's him all the time. Mm -mm. I don't agree with the people that was like, he's just always doing that. And he, I don't think so. Um, but uh, yeah, it, should, it still should be scary to anybody that the president of the United States can have a night like that. It's still scary. But I feel more angry about being in this situation because I feel like we're in this situation because we can't trust people to make the best candidate a winner. We Agreed. don't even, we're, as a country, we're not having a discussion. We have never had a discussion, not even, not a serious one or a rhetorical one. We've never had a discussion as a country in our media about Donald Trump stepping down at no point. And, and, Go ahead, get into it, girl. That's my thing. Let's, let That's my thing. If both sides were saying both of these niggas, oh, okay, I, I wouldn't complain. Like, I would literally shut the entire whole fuck up. But because we are not saying that on the other side, they would drag that nigga corpse up there and vote him in the fucking office. So until the Republicans say they candidate needs to be replaced too, because that nigga old, I don't want to hear it. Feel how you want to feel. Say what you want to say. Okay. Oh, I didn't see the debate. Okay. Whatever. I don't care. For me, I just want to say, I'm not talking about the age at this point. I think when we're talking about Donald Trump, 
it's the multiple sexual assault allegations. It's the criminality. It's the convictions. It's the moral ineptitude. It's the hypocrisy. It's everything. There's never been a discussion in our country, even after January 6th. Right. When he was like when they were trying to impeach him and we knew Republicans would not. Even in that situation, we've never had an actual like come to Jesus. What the fuck is that party doing? Why is he your candidate? Right. And I'm I'm sorry to to sound like this because I I, I understand people have feelings and some people's feelings. They're not going to like what I have to say about it. But I do think it is weak to give up on Biden right now. Yes! And I don't mean it and I I don't mean it like oh I hate these people or not. I just feel like you're softer than me. I I can't look at the other side and be like, well the right thing to do. I don't think we're past doing the right thing. Yes, we are. And if you really are when we go low, we go low. Going low right now is I'll put Biden in no matter what the fuck happens. No matter what. And you that's have my, to stand behind that. That's my low. So I just that's why I said I, I laugh at people that tell me that 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 mock I bring it up all the time and I know people don't even understand sometimes or they maybe they think I'm nailing the point too much. This is why I bring up the Michelle Obama quote all the time because so many of y'all mocked her. Well, I go to hell. No, you don't. Mm-mm. You get weak willed and you and you turn around and you want to do the right thing. And you should want to do the right thing. That's what makes the Democratic Party better. Right. Because they at least people want to try to do the right things. They, they can't always get it done, but they try to do the right things. But this is one of those times where, to me, doing the right thing and doing the thing that that says, like, fuck it, we going all in, is probably just supporting body. And, yeah, if they switch, I'll still support whoever uh, is the person, especially if it's Kamala. But just understand if it's not Kamala, there's a whole nother, other discussion that y'all ain't ready to have. And the last part I'll say before we move on, because I know we talked about this a lot, whoever they bring in, the, the liberal dream and the naivety that people have is they'll bring in the next person, the media will be more fair to that person. They will not. This happens all the time. Obama used to be ahead in the polls and they talked about him as if he was down the whole time. Mm-hmm. They would say the polls were aberration or did not really count. They used to talk about how his favorability rating was low. It was never lower than Congress or his Republican opponents ever. And they and yet they talked about him like he needed to capitulate to the people who did not like him and be the president of everybody. And they didn't want to say why it was so he was such a divisive president. But it immediately corresponded, course, coincided with his comments on Skip Gates and Trayvon Martin. I know what it is in this country. It, I, I, and I know good, good, liberal, well-meaning white folks. I understand where they're coming from. Where they like, why? Well, we just go to Kamala and move on. What's the problem? It's because they they would not have a problem voting for Kamala. The problem for me is not those people. I just Mm-mm. think their inability to see how fucked up these other white folks are right, is holding us back because if they could, they'd be like, oh no, I see why the black voters in South Carolina said it's got to be Joe Biden because when it was Hillary Clinton, y'all folded. Yes, you y'all had a folded. chance for something else. So I don't I don't want to hear y'all. Don't want to hear it. If, if somehow he loses, then we was going to lose with everybody. Yes. So, you know, I, I hope I'm wrong though. I hope I'm wrong. I don't, but that's America hasn't given me a lot of reasons to hope to feel right, mm-hmm. to feel like, yeah, we can pull that off. You know, by, uh, Obama's probably the most excellent president I've ever seen in my lifetime. And we talk about that motherfucker crazy. Yes, they do. You know, they're mad the motherfucker is making money in Hollywood. They mad the motherfucker making didn't. money off of books. They mad he won't come back and quote unquote save us with whatever the fuck that fucking means. Right. Nigga, they, he not the president no more. So like, you know, they and of course, you know, all the other shortcomings while in uh, he didn't do enough. He did too much. It's just, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell y'all. This is what we got left. Mm-hmm. Um, we had, we basically had Bojangles and it's 959 and y'all want the, the, the whole eight piece box. And y'all know they only got wings and beans. Come on. Yeah. And that's and that's all you're going to get. You have to kind of just take it. Yeah, like you said, I know, you know, like I said, these are things we talked about, but like I said, it's simple to me. Um, a lot of, I've, I've realized a lot more people have faith in this country. They have more faith in white people than I do. 
Um, and I'm like, nah, white people have showed me and, and just American masses have showed me that you will not accept anybody than an old white man because we've never had anybody outside of Barack Obama that's not an old white man ever be president in this United States of America. Um, all right, let's go to the next comment. Um, uh, Appia says, I think the TV debates are maybe not a great idea overall. It's good for TV business, but for a country, it's just another show, like a sports game. Doesn't say who do, who would be, do the better job as president. Politics as entertainment, what could go wrong? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's always been that way. Um, but I think it especially feels bad now in the polarizing time where both candidates are very lacking to me. Um, so when it was Obama, I loved watching his debates. I thought he was great at it. But also... I never met or saw anybody who said their mind was changed or they would vote for him. And I also thought it was silly <clears throat> the way they treat it like a horse race where like when he has a low energy debate, all of a sudden it's like everything he's ever said and done is questioned. And uh, we're seeing the worst part of that now with Biden where you can, I don't think you'll find very many people who truly feel like he has, his administration has not been, uh, doing an admirable job, admirable job under harsh circumstances for the last three and a half years. Vast majority of people who have been paying attention will go, no, they they doing the damn thing. Um, but then that one debate, and they're like, he can go. That's that's not a to me. That's not a rational point of view. And I can't. I get it. it, but I just don't think we can govern that way. Like you can't. Like we knew he was old when he got the job. Right. So, so at this point. It, this we know what's going on at this juncture and it, like i said if they decide to roll with them then we rolling with them and that's just it it is for me i never i've never felt great about any president i've voted for except obama agree and that's because i'm a pragmatist and realistic on obama i wasn't a hope and dream person mm -mm. and i know people smart people people i respect that i hope and dream people and they're all disenchanted and disillusioned and I'm like, I don't know. I thought you were smarter than that. I thought you read enough books to know you don't believe in a person like that. They just a person. Is that mm -hmm. like what you believe is the the, the 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 apparatus they put at the helm? But okay. Yeah, and it's also at the end of the day, like you said, conversation that people don't want to have is that people don't want to have, and I've said this before and I will continue to say this, the problem with Joe Biden isn't Joe Biden. The problem with Joe Biden is the populace. The populace put us in the position where we got Joe Biden. And so until people are willing to admit the populace is the voting populace, the people that actually legally can vote is the problem until we actually sit down and be like how nobody wants to say how we got Joe Biden. They just gonna go Joe Biden. No, give him the fuck out. Well, how the fuck did we yeah. get Joe there's Biden? A lot of, there's a lot of I acting like it's rigged or like he was installed. And the truth of the matter is he just beat everybody. So yes. I don't know what to tell you. America told me what to think. I didn't say this. Right. You go back in history. You think I'm banging on you? No, go back. America make. I voted for Elizabeth Warren in the primary. America told me we can't have that. We can have a white man, an old white man is what we will give you. We don't want a gay guy. We don't want black women. No. Nope. We don't want a black guy. Mm -mm. We don't want any of that. We don't we don't want a white woman. Nope. And I'm sorry, but make me believe in something else then. Right. Okay, that progress we were supposed to have gotten over the hill with Obama, we regressed. We we elected the most racist motherfucker ever to the goddamn office after that since like Andrew Jackson. So so don't be mad at me for being cynical. Mm -mm. I'm more I'm not hopeful or optimistic. I'm just more cynical than you are. You know, when when it's like, oh man, you really don't think we could just change out? No, I don't, because no, you've wow. never shown me we can. So yeah, it's gotta be him. Anyway. Hey Rod and Karen, I just want to thank you too for always taking the voting process so seriously. This from Trace Windu. And reminding people why it's important to not dick around with this election or any future elections. Personally, I'm not taking any of these folks seriously calling for Joe to step down. One, he has already defeated this motherfucker once in a landslide victory back in 2020. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rod. But weren't his numbers possibly the highest win ever for a Democrat or something like that? Well, it wasn't a landslide. He had the highest amount of votes ever for any candidate in history. He beat Trump. I want to say Trump had the second highest. He did. Ever. Um, which makes me go, I'm not, the America hasn't shown me that someone else can do that. Now, Trump has never won 
the um, popular vote. So, and I don't know that Republicans won the popular vote. I, I, I don't remember last, maybe Reagan. I don't know what last time a Republican won the popular vote, but um, it is what it is at this point. Like, this dude, for everything they told us about how he couldn't win, for everything they said about how it was impossible, recount after recount, to Donald Trump trying to, to steer people to to sh- to to change the numbers in Georgia and Arizona and stuff. It nothing could stop Joe Biden from being president because the people at the end of the day went and did the thing they supposed to do and go vote. Mm-hmm. If you're telling me they're not going to do that in 2024, well then we're going to fucking lose. And I don't have anything else to say for you because I'm not convinced that there's people that are like, well, I would not, I would not vote for Joe Biden, but if it was Kamala, I would. I don't believe that though. Th- I, I don't believe there's a huge group of people out there like that that will put this nope. over the edge. Mm-mm. Um, I because everyone I know who's like, God, I wish it was Kamala is also like, but I will vote for Joe. Yes. And I don't know that the opposite exists, but maybe I'll be wrong. I'd love to know. Uh, two, when the obvious revelation that Trump is a child rapist has recently been released from sworn testimony from a dead pedia- pedophile, Epstein, and no one is calling for Trump to step down. Y'all saw that. I haven't even seen media cover those. Um, I haven't seen media like truly. I've seen tweets about those files and about those um, the sworn testimony. I've never not seen any media outlet cover it. It looked like that's some shit they would jump on. I I. I don't know how to tell people. I just think this is a fucking rigged game. And I don't trust the rule makers to be fair. Mm -mm. You know, this is the thing I was saying about Bronny where I'm like, I, I know why I feel okay with LeBron and his son being on the same team and shit, but I don't trust that these media people we have will be fair about this. I think I don't, I, I think they'll say nice things today. And at some point, six months from now, They'll be calling for Bronny's job and and mm-hmm. using it to mock LeBron James mm-hmm. and talking about who he's tweeting and following yeah. on social media and and be saying all kinds of wild reckless shit to him and and, and, and people will be disrespecting him through his son and I'm gonna be here saying yeah I fucking thought so because I actually don't think that they truly grew hearts three sizes that day and said God what a great story I'll never say nothing bad about Bronny I don't trust you motherfuckers as far as I can throw you prove me wrong. I uh, personally, and I and I think the same thing with this shit in, in the election. Like, I don't trust that they'll just go, okay, they switched out Biden. All right, well, look, we're all gung ho for Kamala. We're all everybody's ten toes down. We support her. No, the next thing's gonna be like, well, why her? Mm-hmm. It should be Gavin Newsom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, she better pick a fucking vice president. That I did it. It's gonna be some bullshit. Oh well, she actually just as bad as Joe or something. Mm-hmm. You know, people. Oh, her. What about her likability? We don't like her. You know, I'd love to see that proven wrong. There's reasons it can go a different way. I just don't trust America. I personally feel when the hang up is someone being old versus being a child rapist on top of all the other fucked up shit, I'm rocking with the old man. Uh, he is three. He's on the one only person who can beat them. Some Dems are so damn fickle and no replacement candidate could be good enough at all. Yeah, no one wants to believe he's the only person that can beat them. But like I said, America ain't shown me that it can be somebody else. I ain't that the truth. Anyway, thanks again, Ryan and Karen, for all that you do and say. Appreciate your hearts, minds, and souls. Trey Swindu. Also, thanks again to y'all and Justin for blessing us with a Balls Deep episode on the 4th. I wasn't even expecting that, so what? that was a great uh, surprise. Yeah, and we did it early, too. Mm-hmm. It was very fun. We it had a great fun. time. Yes. That Balls Deep episode is an annual tradition. It's one of the best things I look forward to every year because it is us talking about NBA free agency and all the money that players get. And I make like a running foul and we play music to correspond with the money. Um, Each time we announce a contract. I enjoy the music. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's just, and we just talk shit. It's so fun. Uh, If you're not on the premium side, come get on the premium side. Our sports show is not like any other sports show in America, Mm -mm. hands down. And we're having so much more fun than everybody and yes. we can talk serious things, but we're not we're 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 more having fun than anything else. Um, let's see. YouTube, we got eight comments. Um, let me see if I can let's see. Boom. All right. So we got one from DeAndre who says, You mentioned Twitter not being an accurate representation of how people feel about voting. I can't agree more. 
And I will actually add to that and say, I genuinely believe the loudest people on social media are either anti-Biden or even pro-Trump and even aren't, aren't even voters at all. They just like attention. Agree. The people who take this seriously can clearly see the difference between the Biden administration, because who the fuck cares that he's old on voting for a team, not the coach, and what Trump and Republicans have in store for America. Yeah, you summed it up perfectly. Can't cannot uh the only Dre, I cannot agree more. Uh Ghost of Zool says great episode, fam. The coach you speak of goes back to the 1950s and 60s and the John Birch Society and a group of hardcore right wingers out here on the West Coast that saw what was going on with the civil rights movement and were like, hell no. They tapped washed up B-movie actor Ronald Reagan to be their water boy and carry the message to the people. We know how that all turned out. The thing is, Reagan will be considered a rhino today. The only thing you forgot to mention is it's a death cult. All this bullshit ultimately is to bring about the rapture. Fuck that bullshit. Vote, motherfuckers. Earl, <laughs> Earl left four different messages. We can't play like that, ATL. We can't play like that, ATL. We need to come correct in November, all caps in all three of those messages. And one said, it's always racism when it comes to a black woman. I mean, I can't. You tell me why Kamala is so unlikable. And I and, and, and pl- explain it to me like I'm five. Right. Because I ain't met no one that's told me why the fuck she can't be the nominee yet. You know, and I don't even agree. Like, I was listening to people. I know they're trying to be fair and stuff. Like, I listened to somebody that said, well, she wasn't great. She might not be a great debater. I'm like, who the fuck decided that? She was great in those. When there's 13 people on the fucking stage, first of all, who, what, what? So I want to make, make two points without getting too upset. First one is, when there's that many fucking people on stage, no one gets to be great at debating. Mm-mm. There were so many candidates. I don't even know how you can say she's not great Mm-mm. or how you evaluate. And then number two, she was better than Biden. Yes, she was. Biden didn't win those primaries because his debates were good. Mm-hmm. They were laughing at got the gaffes then. Oh, oh yeah. It's just it was a he's Teflon. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, that shit bounce off. The reason I think Biden is going to end up being a nominee and the only one that can do this is not because I think he's excellent. It's because he can de- he can win despite not being that. None of the other candidates got a chance to be because we are pieces of shit as a voting populace. Right. We would take small knocks on candidates, turn that into their entire story, and disqualify them from office. Yes. People that we had no reason to be that harsh towards. But that is what the Democratic Party is. That is what Democratic voters are. If you are not a white dude, we start finding fucking reasons not to fuck with you immediately. And it can be tiny. It can be the same reason we loved you is the reason why we hate Beto's cursing. Why is that a problem? Because he's cursing? The other dude's grabbing pussies. (laughs) What are we talking about? This is not a serious country. No. So, yeah, I like I said, she was better than Biden, but so were several other people. It just didn't matter. He the one dude that he don't got to be the best, and that's why the fuck he up there. Kristoff uh, says, Rod and Karen are the voices of reason. My group chat was blowing up that Biden is getting killed, and I was like, are we watching the same debate? All I saw was one person lying, yelling, and saying nonsense, and Biden with a weak voice, to be frank, defending his policy with legitimate facts and reason. Yeah, I, like I said, man, I you know, it, it just does not matter what Trump does. He's up there, and we just, there's no bar for Trump. Mm-mm. That's it. It's, you know, if there's any reason to not debate Trump, that's the real reason. And I don't think it would change if it was a different candidate standing next to him. I honestly think he gets to go lie unchallenged and not correct it and not really. This is what you're going to get. Yeah, because the better TV show is for him to do that. Of course. More ratings. Uh, the last and one. Then you said the ratings actually went down. So half the yeah. people didn't even like. Not trying funny. There's a lot of me's out there. It was like, fuck this shit. But we are talking about it, so it worked, you know. It's mm-hmm. a good TV show. CNN knows they're making a TV show. I mean, they put out that fact check three, four hours later and was basically like, yeah, so he was lying, but oh well. And yeah. then got and then got upset with anyone who said, why didn't y'all fact check him during the show? They're like, that, 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 ain't, our, that ain't our problem. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, last one is from Cash, who says, in this episode, Ryder can't hit all the topics that had me fucked up. I totally agree that we all love the key key, but there are times, and this ain't one of those, that we need to have a grown folks talk. Big ups to those, to you getting in that uh, uh, ad 
ass and waking people up regarding November 2024 elections and every election after that, a fan for life, soul sister number one, black coffee. Well, thank you, soul sister number one. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, and I, I, I didn't say anything on Twitter because I didn't want to be an asshole, but I, I found all the people trying to make funny jokes and content out of it to be part of the, it's just like, okay, you don't see this like me. I really think this is serious. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm, t- and y'all know I joke about a lot of shit. But I'm like, oh, I'm not joking about this. Y'all, well, you can, didn't y'all, even watch it. Y'all so. can have the jokes. I, yeah. I, yeah, like, no, this is life and death. It's serious. I don't want to hear the jokes. I don't. I don't. I just don't care. Relax. The next one. Oh, before we go to the next one, we play music. So I have nowhere to put commercial. Sorry. <laughs> That was called Afro Swing. All right. The next one is 2931. Worst roommate ever. Three comments. EVE says, I had to agree with you about worst roommate ever. Some of those people I would have had to shoot, especially that guy who kept moving in with women and then taking over their apartments. And that woman lost her entire condo over him. None of them could have hired some men or had brothers or cousins who come whoop that man's ass. I was so infuriated over that whole scenario. It could, could not have been me because that man was a red flag from the beginning. He claimed to be a lawyer, had all these good credentials. Then why did he have all his stuff already packed up in the U-Haul and everything was so urgent? Ain't no damn way. I would have exercised my Second Amendment right to bust a cap in his ass. I probably could get away with it if it happened in certain states. I could say he was trying to attack me. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, mm. you know, there's no way for me to say what I'm about to say that don't sound like someone could use that clip later to be like, this nigga's a murderer. So I'm not going to say it, but ain't, ain't no way, buddy. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Like, especially once I know you're willing to put hands on me. Oh, buddy, you're dead. You are a dead person. (laughs) Like. Oh Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Don't yeah. I remember I'll just put it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story from when I was a kid, and I think y'all will understand what I'm saying. Just add a gun to the scenario. There was a kid when I was in uh middle school who wanted to beat me up and fight me all the time. And the problem with that is my parents just were not fans of me fighting they weren't like a lot of the parents in my neighborhood who were like if you get in a fight i'm gonna whoop your ass if you don't whoop their ass yep. they they didn't believe none of that ignorance shit Mm-mm. they it, there were times i got in a fight that i felt justified and i got in trouble when i got home because they were like you actually weren't justified you could have done more to avoid that fit mm-hmm. that situation yes that that should be your last resort so because i had those kind of parents i couldn't just be like oh you talk bad about my mom i'm gonna punch you in your fucking face I did that one time. I got kicked out the bus. I got a whooping. I was wrong. See what I'm saying? I could, and I was like, well, he was talking about my mama. And it's like, yeah, it don't matter. It don't matter. So all that to say, there was this kid. And he used to fucking like go back and forth, talk shit about me. I don't know why he didn't like me. I don't know what started it. I was in AP classes and shit. So I'm one of the only black kids in there. He was a white kid. Um, I don't know if it was a race thing or not. It felt racial. There were some times racial slurs flew during our fights. Um, but I, you know, but I don't know what particularly made him, him come after me and I'm a smart mouth. I'm funny. So there were times where I did say shit back. You know, I wasn't like the perfect victim that he talked shit about me and, and came at me and I just sat there and went, Oh, I guess I just need to turn the other cheek. No, there were times I was like, I'd say some funny class and laugh at him and he want to fight me. Um, you know, and one time, uh, I actually remember him throwing a pencil at me in class that could have hit me in the eye or some shit, you know, and our math teacher, I, I think that was, that was the last thing that ever happened because, uh, some happened before that. And I'm about to tell you that story. So this kid kept fucking with me and we'd be in gym class together and stuff. And he fucked with me in gym class. I knew we had this class together. So we go to class, uh, we're playing dodgeball or something. And I set this up before we even had class. I knew what was going to happen. 
we were playing dodgeball with some such sport. He's talking shit, trying to pick on me again. Um, and I talk a little shit back, except this time, I think whatever sport we were playing, I like roughed him up a little bit. Like I hit him with the ball. Nothing that would get me in trouble with a teacher, nothing right. out of bounds, but just, you know, made sure that it was like, nah, fuck that. I ain't, I ain't your bitch, you know? And I knew he would be steaming hot about that. And he couldn't wait for a second where I would be alone or something or not have a teacher around or whatever. And he'd be able to try to beat me up uh, because, you know, I'm not supposed to be out here fighting or initiating fights. So we go into the locker room, getting changed after class. I know he's coming. I know he wants to fight me because I just talked some shit about him. And I hear him coming in the locker room, talking out loud in front of everybody like, who the fuck is I'm going to kick your fucking ass and all this shit. And I. I knew my locker was across from his locker and there were benches that were a little below below knee length in our locker rooms. And so my back was to him, but I knew exactly where he was at. And I had been taking Taekwondo and um, he was being loud. So I knew where he was at and he tried to come over to me. People moved out the way so that he could try to assault me or whatever. And I turned around using the bench as leverage because I knew he wouldn't be able to keep his legs from under it. I grabbed him by his shoulders and grabbed his shirt, used his weight to use the leverage of the bench so that he could not stand. So he falls because the bench is tripping him, slammed him on his back, and I went to town on his ass. And after I went to town on his ass, I walked straight out of the locker room with my stuff, walked right into the principal's office, and he's yelling faces bleeding and shit coming to find me because he thinks i'm running like he thought oh he he don't he's scared of what i'm gonna do after after i get up but they pulled me off of him i could have kept going but you know i go into the locker room i say y'all need to call my parents and y'all need to call his parents because i just defended myself and this guy is trying to bully me and um it needs to stop because if not i don't know what i'm gonna do to him it needs to stop and um and like a fucking sucker, he comes busting in the fucking off in the um right outside the office area where the principal and the administration are, yelling with his face all bloody and shit, talking oh. talking about how he's gonna fuck me up and all this shit. And they're like, "Oh, he is fucking with you." Yes. And so our parents got involved, and like I said, that was the second to last thing. The last thing was he threw a pencil at me in class one time, and. I, I didn't fight him because I knew my parents would not let me go. Well, he threw something at me. I told the math teacher. We went to the office. They got his parents. That was the last fucking time he ever did anything to me. Point being, if a motherfucker was in my house putting their hands on me, we're going to the benches and the locker room, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like I, I don't have no problem being like, oh, I, you will put your hands on me? Okay, cool. Put your hands over here where I already got some shit set up for your ass. And then we'll never have this problem again. You in my territory, bitch. Sorry for that long story, but that's the best way to say it without me, someone playing this on For My Man one day. Uh, Uh, (laughs) Not to For My Man. Evie, he said, forget to add the woman whose friend tried to get her baby taken away. I hate to victim blame, but she moved back with that in with that woman after she tried to kick her out and take her son the first time. Why did she move back in? The second time was on her. Girl, I was victim blaming like shit this whole series. Abby says, I think don't drink fluids found in bottles thrown out by the ocean might be a universally great advice for everyone. Come on now. Okay, well, I guess you ain't never going to find no genie with that attitude. Mm-mm. A genie made of salt water, apparently. You and Karen ain't never. I guess Aladdin would have been a short-ass movie. No, it sure kidding. would have been short. Uh, then the comment on the YouTube is Miss Uplifting T says, thank you for the very weird, real world examples of how SCOTUS has corrupted the law to f- t- favor a very few pow- a very powerful minority. Uh, two strong emojis, a hundred. The Le- Leonard Leo six are unstoppable unless we the people stop them. Agreed. Agreed. You know, we're not getting past this because y'all just don't like voting the joke for Joe Biden. Right. We just got to We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do the hard thing and vote and not for your civic duty and not because you feel good in your tummy. Ain't that the truth? You know, this ain't, ain't about, about feeling good. This ain't a, yeah. This ain't about feeling good. It never should have been to be honest, but it definitely ain't that right now. You you go out there, do what you need to do. Period. The next episode is twenty nine thirty two. The balls on Nick Cannon. 
Uh, let's see. DJ says, first, love Rod's shirt for the episode. TMNT childhood in our home. Had to watch the replay. I'm in the catch-up crew for a while as I devour audiobooks for our public library summer read event during the times I usually listen to podcasts. I'm enjoying every single one. I almost forgot how much I love reading for pleasure as college and adulting. Then mothering just took the leisure time to do so. Took away the leisure time to do so. I agree with the box office comeback. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Every time we venture out to catch a show, there's been a nice crowd at the concessions. Reality, of course, is not like pre-Rona, but steady enough to give the feelings they'll make it. I don't mind throwing them some change if I think something's going to be good, and I'm usually giving them more now because some movies will just be a given for the mini-me. Had to venture out for Garfield and Kung Fu Panda. He'll likely want to see Despicable Me and a few others to come. My friends and I made an outing out of Spy Family. That movie was freaking adorable. We planned for another dead for Deadpool and Wolverine. Mm-hmm. That shit won't have no problem making money. Mm-mm. Mom tip for saving. Don't skip out on drive-ins if you're lucky to still have one nearby. If you're lucky, most of them have closed. Yes. We got two movie ticket, two movies for one ticket at our last local one for a steal compared to our indoor mall theater. Concessions are almost the same price, but still cheaper. And if you just don't want to spend an extra sneaking your own stuff in, it's easy peasy since they aren't searching vehicles. Ah, happy memories from the 90s of whole children and coolers hiding under blankets in the backseat because mama was the cheapest of cheapskates. For years, I was five or six years old, the free child age. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that free child age, boy. Being a kid with anxiety, that free child age, I don't know why that shit made me feel the way it do because it really wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I felt like we was sneaking fucking people across the border. I don't know why. I was like, because children are truthful and children be like, I'm seven. Right. You were like, fuck. It's like kids under nine eat free. And I'm like, but I'm nine and a half, mama. I'm nine in three days. Shut up. <laughs> right. They're going to find out. Like, what? They're going <laughs> to see my birth certificate? <laughs> right. They're not going to ask. You be there with a full grown ass beard. And your mama be like, he's nine. And, so. and what you going to do? Uh, Sean says, I mean, I once had some crazy roommates. One morning I woke up to one of my roommates vacuuming the walls because he was concerned they may have a best of in them. What? That do fit the description of crazy. Then the more common occurrence, I would hear a student go into the room above me for a private English lesson. About half an hour later, they had gone from oral practice to oral practice. And I would know then that I should skip dinner because my very Christian roommate with a long term girlfriend was going to want to go out drinking and talk about the frailty of the human condition and how he had to repent. Oh, he was getting he was getting people on their knees in that Christian with that Christianity, huh? Apparently so. No violence, but it was a couple crazy months living with them. Abia says, my vision is still strangely perfect. I don't know why, but my father is 72 and still needs no glasses. He did all the tests recently because he had uh, pro- he had problems with eye pressure and had an operation about two years ago. So he regularly goes to the eye doctor for a checkup, but still perfect vision. So I guess there's that. My mother's vision was always very bad, so I got lucky. Well, the question I would ask is, are you telling us it's perfect vision because you go to the optometrist and they say it's perfect vision? Or are you just telling us that? Because if you're just telling us, obviously, I can't take your word for it. Mm -mm. So I I would need I need you to I need you to send us an email with the optometrist results. (laughs) uh, And uh, and I'm going to send you an email back with some real tiny letters. I want you to cover one eye (laughs) and tell it. Read the letters back to us. To, and you know what? Uh, uh, and not to get off topic, I haven't had that particular eye test in a long time. I've been going to the optometrist for the past few years, but this is one of the first time in a long time we actually went in the room with the letters, and you actually had to stand away from the wall and like cup and like they had a little cup and cup your eye and read. I was like, oh, I ain't took this test in forever. She was like, yeah. That was like every few years we make people actually take the test where you like stand so many feet away from the wall, and it's not a computer screen. It's like we got paper. Wait, so you on don't. The wall. You didn't sit in the chair. You stood. Yes, I stood. That is different because I sat in the chair and they showed me. Oh, okay, yeah, I, 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 and I do it every time. By the way. Oh, okay. I normally, I normally don't. Interesting. Um, they had me stand in the chair, and I forgot how many feet I was away from the wall. But I was a few feet away from the wall, and she was like, "Well, I want you to, you know, look at the paper basically, and 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 what's the lowest line you could read?" And I, you know, read across. And last time I did that, I was literally in school, like you know, in school, school, mm-hmm. and they basically had, you know, had you read across and things like that. They was like, "Just don't squint." 
you know, and if you can't read it, just can't read it, you know, and they, they were saying your sight is, is pretty good, you know, for like the small ones, you know, you might just need something to make it actually look clearer for mm -hmm. you. And so, and then I still did the one where he, you know, you go and it's like on a machine type of thing, but like, this is like the old school where you were, yep, I stood and I looked at the wall. Yep. Um, uh, comments on YouTube. Uh, someone said, oh no, is there a new baby on the way? Because the title of the episode and someone said the only question that needs answering for the balls on Nick Cannon. I don't know, but who, I mean, I, I would say yes every time. Is Right? Until they prove us otherwise, it's the baby on the way. The poll, do you wear prescription glasses? 74% yes, 26% no. Yes, I do. So, and I can't wait to get my new glasses. I'm excited. That's why, that's what we need to get to right there. That's what I was trying to tell you. Because too many people, they feel ashamed of even wearing glasses, which I'm like, what the fuck are you trying to say about me? But, um, but like, also, like, get you some cool glasses. Then you won't feel so much shame about it. It's like, I can't wait to wear my glasses. I want people to see me in these. Because mm -hmm. I wear my contacts today because we was out in the sun. But um, No problem. Yeah, and they keep asking me about contacts. I'm like, nah, I'm good. And uh, he was like, well, I'm writing the notes one day. I said, well, you can write one day, but I'm trying to tell you, child, I miss my eyes with eye drops. I am not fucking with no contacts. Yeah, but I mean, you can get used to it. You you don't have to if you don't want to. That's fine. But you know, for a person like me that wears glasses all the time, contacts are contacts are a godsend, especially for when I play sports or you know do something active uh, or need to wear shades. You know, or three D at movies even. Mm, like yeah, those I are all say, things. Yeah, those are all things. I'm glad I have contacts. Glasses for. on glasses. Yeah, I can. And I just I annoying. took the contacts so easily. Like I remember when I tried on my first pair. The I the people at the store was she was like flabbergasted like she told me how you do it like you put it on your finger you do this you make sure you wash it out with this da, 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 da. and then she's like now i know it's your first time so it's probably gonna take you a long time and it's okay if you don't get it now oh it's oh it's in already i was like yes do you understand i've been thinking about how much i want contact since i fucking wore rec specs <laughs> Okay. I remember the Rex Max. She used to play ball in them bitches. Yeah. Like I I'm I'm all the way in. Yes, thank you. Uh all right. The last episode is the House of the Dragon recap. It's called the Heron Hall Projects. Yeah, they was the projects. Ghetto. Right. In the ghetto. Talking about uh, Kim, I'm talking about the ghetto. Kim Doc says, excellent review. I know nothing and I don't even look at the previews. I just want to enjoy it without looking for it the next thing. Game of Thrones time is really special. We're watching greatness being made. I immediately mm -hmm. thought about the fact that Heron Hall was still kind of standing in Game of Thrones when Tywin was there. I rewatched the series since my girlfriend never watched it at all. She absolutely loves it and watching her react to shit is so special. We just got through the cow pouring molten gold on Viserys and Danny not giving a damn because dragons don't burn. Uh, she went up for that shit and walked out of the room. LOL. Yeah, that's when I knew she was built different. Uh, I'll have to see what Heron Hall became. I just feel like Damon will die there, but maybe relatively old. I, yeah, I hate the prophecies because now his whole story just becomes about how does he die in there somehow. Uh, you know, yeah, anyway. if he dies, if he comes back, like you just never know. Yeah, yeah. Because they just, yeah. I just like I, because I, I, it would be just as. It would be just as shocking if he died anywhere, right? Yes. But now it's like it better happen here. Or they lied in the prophecy. Rod, I think you're right. The two black sailors might be Corliss's bastards. The convo with Rainice was giving me those vibes. Uh, Moingangi says, to continue the space hand analogy, now that the time is advanced, we see the setup. Do you think you could bid Team Greens and Team Black's hypothetical space hands? Yeah, and I still think Team Black holding a better hand. I do too. It's just no, they, but nobody's I mean, played tight. Team, I'm sorry, Team Green is holding a better hand. I mean, yes, 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 Team Green. It's as far as numbers, nobody's played tight, but yes, some some people cutting hearts, but nobody's played tight. But a hand only good as the people playing it. Ain't that the truth? You, you you can still have a nice hand and fuck up and get set. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be sitting across the table with BBL Chrissy as my partner mm -mm. And, a, and Agon. Child, no. Uh, let's see. Classic R and B lover says hello, Rod. I'm one of the people who sent you something, and your reaction engendered no hard feelings on my part. It was not my intent to violate a policy you clearly set forward, so that's my bad. I've been thinking a lot about Raina late. Oh, and this, yeah, I, I, and I'm glad you wrote in to say that you didn't have hard feelings because I didn't want to give anyone hard feelings. I care very deeply about the 
show that we're doing mm-hmm. and I would like to, you know, I'm, I I have to be very stringent on those rules because we've in the past had people that have went way above and beyond. Mm-hmm. You did not do that, but it just mm-hmm. was like a good time to remind everybody, hey, Saturday, you got something we dropped the ball on, feel free. Yes, Saturday. But before Saturday, we good. And unless there's like something that we're missing, like we're constantly fucking something up and you're like, here's something that will help you with that, sure. But if we're not fucking it up, no need, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, and the stuff with the dragons is interesting because I feel like the dragons are as important as the show makes them, yes. not the books. Right. So while the books and is very distinctive about which dragon did what and what features each dragon has, the show hasn't really nailed that in a way that makes it relevant every week. Uh-uh. It will be relevant at some point, especially during battles. Like it definitely mattered that. Vagar was much bigger than Luke's dragon when it happened. Yes. But up until then, there was happened. no reason for us to like talk about it every week. You Agreed. Know? I've been thinking a lot about Reyna lately, and she really is an interesting if little spotlighted character. She is in the shadow of her big sister Bela, whom her father ha- was always has always favored. Heck, even Rainice has an extremely close relationship with Bela. It is likely her late mother was the only one that Reyna felt truly saw her. I for one am hoping that she gets her dragon in her moment to shine. Yeah, I think she will. At least I'm hoping she does something, you know, because I just feel like the show is doing too much to let us know that she feels forgotten about and passed over. Mm -hmm. So it must it must even out somewhere. Yes. You know, but anyway, Evie says the latest recap is the reason why the Black Isle Tips recaps are elite, because this past television episode wasn't as engaging to me as the first two. But your recaps always bring nuance to things I may have missed. Yeah, it's and it's honestly, it's the boring ones that are the ones I end up writing the most about. Because the boring ones are the talky ones. Yes, but it's a lot of dialogue. Yeah, yeah and the talky in and Game exposition. of Thrones. Yeah, and the talky in Game of Thrones is a lot of like, this motherfucker's killing this person off screen somewhere. Or this mm-hmm. this is setting up this thing. Or these two people don't like each other. Watch out for that. And it's like, you're going to end up talking about that shit. Mm-hmm. Now, the ones, the shortest recaps are the ones where it's like a 20-minute fight scene. Because it'd be straightforward. And I'm like, our recap can't live up. You just need to go watch the fight scene. Because, like, I'm not fitting to do a blow-by-blow every single. That's crazy. I'm sorry. You got to go watch it. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll make jokes. We'll reference it. But, like, Battle of the Bastards. Yeah, you Ooh, need yeah, to go find that, that. You have you have to. That shit was so literally is some of the best battle that I've ever seen on like live TV. It was so much shit happening all at once. I I mean, just it was just beautiful. Yeah, the jokes just hit better if you see those type of things. But anyway. Not saying the episode was bad, just that your recap made it so much better. I do kind of hope that Cole and his team running the Damon and the Heron Hall slums at the Heron Hall slums <laughs> and his dragon and Damon lights those motherfuckers up. That would be awesome. I think it would open up the opportunity for Laris to be the hand. And you know, that dude is messed up in the head. I bet as the hand, he would really shake things up and Alice's feet will never be safe. Right. Right. I think he eventually will be the hand. Right. Great recap as always. Just want to say, I appreciate all the work you put into it. Thank you. Renzi mm-hmm. D. Genius says, I enjoyed this recap. I listen to several podcasts and YouTubers that break down them dragons each week and pick up anything I may have missed. I won't read the book, so getting different interpretations of the show helps me greatly. Thank you and Karen, and Karen for your humor, humorous take on them dragons. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, baby. Um, and the poll was, do you, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Comments on YouTube, two of them. Uh, Cali Calibra says, "Do you do your thing, K and Rod. Set them damn rules. Motherfuckers gotta always act like know it alls instead of enjoying y'all's interpretation. This is why I fucks with y'all. Thank you. But I, I didn't say yes. it that way on purpose. I don't Hilarious. want to make nobody mad. People just think they helping. Yes. So I'm not upset or mm-hmm. angry with anyone. Mm-mm. Cause they love the show and they love what we do. Yes, I agree. Um. Then she Shatara says." Oh my God, this title had me click fast. Hashtag Hair and Hall Projects. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you, everybody who shares our recaps, who watches our recaps, um, who tells people about them. Uh, that is the word of mouth is really what keeps those things floating. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we can see that they get more views on YouTube than a lot of our normal shows with guests and without. Um, so thank you to everybody who's, who's telling people to go check us out. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the poll was, do you enjoy privacy tropes like Al- Alice telling Damon he will die in hair hall? 66% say yes, 33% say no. So I think 66% is uh, obviously a high enough percentage that they won't stop doing stuff like that. Right. And if they like it, they like it. You know? So, hey, good for y'all. I, it's not my thing, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing just because I'm not into it. Right. All right, we're gonna get into some voicemails after this next um after this next beat that we're gonna play. Uh how about this from DJ Ooh. John? Listen! Listen! I want you to You see. I want you to I want you to come, you see. Oh, no. I want you to come, you see. All right, first voicemail, two of them from Erica. Hey, Ronnie Karen, this is your girl, Erica. I had to stop the um, episode and laugh my ass off because I too am watching the worst roommate ever. And let me tell you something. I don't care how fucking high this this Charlotte Rink gets. I'm not getting a roommate. I have had a bad roommate experience. I've had a couple. In fact, when I was in college, I had a roommate, and me and her got into it. I had to beat her ass, and then her mama started harassing me, and then my mom was just like, I can't have that. You got to come home. So, yeah, I definitely do not want a roommate I'm going to have to take my chances out here. So if you see me on South trying to do something strange for a little change, <laughs> it's because I refuse to get a roommate just based off of the worst roommate ever. All right. Thanks for another great week of episodes. Much love to you guys always. Now, she did call back. But first of all, like, listen, I, you're right. Rent is high, but I'm not fighting where I live. And Erica is a sweetie. So mm-hmm. knowing she had to physically get into it with somebody, it went terribly wrong. It was wrong. bad. It must have been real, real it bad. It must have been really, really, really bad. Yeah, it was funny as she's talking about you see some see me doing some strange with a little change. I remember I was driving out of the street one day, not far from where we stay, and there was a woman with headphones on who was like just twerking, just in the middle of the fucking street. I, I was like Oh, I that, remember that. Yeah. Yes, just I, out the blue. I didn't know if she she was selling it. I didn't know she just the I new know Megan drop. What was happening? I ain't gonna make no assumptions, but I listen. The rent is high. It's whatever we gotta do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's whatever we gotta do. Like it's not. It's another place not too far up the street from us where it is sex worker central now. You know, it's hard out here. Okay? Ain't it no like it's homeless people on every corner. Mm-hmm. It's, you know the rent is too damn high guys and it's not coming down no it ain't all right next voicemail from erica as well so i'm continuing to listen to the episode and me and rod are on the same type of time because i need to know why that woman took her ass back to janine house after she called cps on her and tried to steal her baby after you call cps on me and i get my baby back the relationship is over I also might kick your ass, but the relationship is definitely over. I am watching this story, and it's just wild. And it continues to get wild. Yes, yes but I agree, Rod. After some of the shit these people was doing, I just don't understand why they didn't just up the strap on them. For All right, real. this is Erica. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I'd, I'd sell dick first. You out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> You're not taking my kid and I'm moving back in with you. It's no amount of help on the earth. I'll sell crack. I don't give a fuck. And she had already had like different disabilities she was dealing with too. But it's one thing that I know it makes things desperate, but it's also a thing where like you ain't got no recourse against this person and they, they know it. Yes. Uh, Kiana right, does the last uh, two words. I've been carrying this with Kiana. It's been a minute since I called in. I missed y'all. I hope y'all are having a fantastic summer. Uh, it's hotter than hell in D.C. Uh, I know it's hotter than hell in Charlotte, so hopefully y'all are staying cool. I know you're right to the point. I so thoroughly enjoy y'all's coverage of the election stuff. It has been a shit show uh, in a lot of spaces where I kind of find myself and so. I'm really just trying to be mindful of not letting people fuck with my head about it. Uh, 
long story short, I need to posture and feel this like air of moral superiority is what fucks us over every single time. That when Rod said Donald Trump getting uh, getting convicted of all those crimes did not prompt the Republicans to have a fucking meeting to say if they still wanted him to be their candidate, but we're really going back and forth about if Joe Biden should be our person. That thing touched me down in my heart because them motherfuckers play the long game. That's why Roe v. Wade got overturned. That's why affirmative action got overturned. That's why they're going to keep fucking around and eventually we might end up losing access to birth. Like, the man is, you're either going to vote for the felon, you're not going to vote, which is a vote for the felon, or you're going to vote for Joe Biden. And people are still being like, well, the, Demo- the DNC should have gave us a better candidate. 2020, we had the whole goddamn Wu-Tang Clan up there. We had every kind of play. We had the United Colors of Benetton. We had everything. We had women. We had a white woman. We had a black woman. We had a gay man. We had a Latino man. We had all the people. And ultimately, at the end of the day, like Rod said, like Karen said, we wanted the white man. And so we ended up with the white man. And now y'all are upset because we got the white man. Because you didn't vote. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't vote. Because you didn't engage. And now you want to complain. I think that's the biggest frustration I have which is why, I don't know, I applaud y'all for the work that you do. I'm just not, I'm not trying to have these kind of conversations because people are dumb. And they also don't want to take any accountability. Right. Yeah, I mean, the non-voters who get vocal and angry with everybody are essentially people that put a gun to their head. But then they put their head next to yours and they're like, I will shoot myself. And it's like, fam, leave me out of it. Right. I don't, like, this is the thing. I think people should vote. I think people should vote blue. I think a lot of people that claim that they're not voting for moral reasons are defeating themselves because then when those things either don't happen or their voices aren't heard, I'm like, well, you had a chance to have a voice, a voice in this and you chose the, your voice of dissent and not. So that's it. You protest. Cool. You protest it with your vote. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to bend over backwards for you. Nope. Like that's fine. You did that's what you think the assignment is. We disagree about what the assignment is. But I'm not gonna that's it for me. I don't owe you shit. Okay? And you don't get to judge it. You don't get to tell me you can judge, but you don't get to like dictate anything to me. Nope. And you're gonna be real surprised when you step to me and find out I actually don't fuck with you. Like you've been sitting over there in your information silo so long thinking you're a hero. You ain't really had nobody push back on you because people mostly either find you annoying or they feel so everyone wants to be liked so much. They feel so ashamed when someone, and they just let you go. Yeah. When someone comes in and says, how can you even vote for they go? Oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm not like that. Just leave me alone and you me and you can be cool. We don't need to talk. Right. About but it. if you come over here with some bullshit, I'm not running. I'm not ducking. And I'll sit up there and tell you why I think what you're doing is is way more harmful than anything I've ever done. So I just find that people don't have a backbone for that part. And so people start assuming, well, I must be morally writing superior because people aren't pushing back on me or because the people that do push back on me say despicable things to me. And I'm not fitting to say nothing despicable to you. I won't lose myself for you. But I'm not backing down either because I like you're going to have to just prove me wrong. Show me what I why I got wrong. Uh, she left one more voicemail. That lady don't be playing. Let me wrap up my angry rant really quickly. If people want better candidates, I don't know why they don't act as if they need to actually do the work to get better candidates and then right. back those better candidates. Yes. Because we've had better candidates. And ultimately, what people like the most, what they rely on the most, what they know the most while also hating the most, is having the old white man tell us what to do. If y'all don't want the old white man telling us what to do, then vote for the more progressive candidates. Vote for the other types of candidates and then platform those people. But at the bare minimum, stop being dumb. Stop trying to blame everything on the DNC and just stop saying weird shit in general. Anyway, love y'all. I hope whatever project you're cooking up that you're going to tell us about later is going well. And I can't wait to hear about it. Have a wonderful day. Oh shit, I almost forgot. Yeah, we can mention it now. Mm-hmm. It's official. Um, we are uh part of the iHeartRadio family now. Mm-hmm. Uh we have joined um Michael Smith's the Inflection Network, Network. Inflection Point. Um now we put it on all of our social medias. Um so you know you can go on social media and see like the promo they put out for us. 
and support that way. Uh, you don't have to change anything. Mm -mm, You're still changes. listening to us uh, where you can hear, wherever you hear us. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the Our Heart Radio app, I'm sure that's even better for them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're we're on the Inflection Network. It's it's just uh, it's dope. You know, I'm enjoying uh, you know being over here working with the team. Uh, being introduced to all these people I can't wait to collaborate with everybody on stuff you know we've already had Michael Smith on the show multiple times uh, you know we think the world of him anyway um, and you know everything that we managed to like sign and do is all stuff that we're comfortable with mm -hmm. um, it's low key is actually like a better um, as far as our IP and stuff it's even better than, than Spotify as far as mm -hmm. making sure we own and keep everything regardless of what happens um, they haven't asked us to change anything we do with the show. Mm -mm. Um, so it's just been cool. And um, thank you, everybody, for uh, listening and stuff. I'm sure some of y'all could see some of the stuff behind the scenes. Like, we had to change over to say, like, hey, we're uh, our heart radio is bringing you this podcast. That's why. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been real dope. And uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for, for being patient while we work through all that stuff. Um, all right. Let's get into the last segment, which is y'all's emails. email time um let's see uh this is from mf who says i had to get progressive lenses recently and also computer glasses because my job at my job i stared at the computer all day yeah they got some that had that blue light blocking thing that you can wear and so your eyes don't get dry and, and irritated if you stare at the screen all day i i got that on my glasses and before that my eyes just get super red super dry i was putting eye drops in them all fucking day and i couldn't figure out why i know it helps sometimes to look off in the distance they say but honestly i can't remember the last time i needed my eye drops and i think it's because i just switched to that fucking the other kind of glasses and uh, I think it does work, you know. Um, mm -hmm. it, it does. And I know I got my one pair of glasses, but the the optometrist said something, and I may consider it maybe later on or something like that. He was like, yeah, you got these glasses, but he said you actually probably need another pair of glasses with the same prescriptions just to, for your computer, like like mm -hmm. just at your desk, mm -hmm. you know. And I was thinking, I was like, nah, I wear the same glasses. But then I'm thinking, I was like, yeah, it will probably be beneficial just to have one at well, my Just get desk. that blue light protection on them. I think you know, I got that. Well, you know, you got transition lenses this time. That means when you go out to the sun, they change colors. But I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that may give it the same protection anyway. Okay. But you also do the sh show lately without wearing your glasses, and I know you've been wearing your glasses less and less, and your eyes been watering more and more. So I've it could be that, that too, it could yeah. be that you're not, you don't have any protection from that light. Um, mm, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, I got progressive lenses that transition in the car. Most don't, but I live right on the coast and they don't get dark enough in the car when it's full sunlight coming off the ocean. So I had to get a third pair of polarized sunglasses for driving, but I'm like 10 years older than y'all. So this is aging. So I, hey, it's better than dying. Mm -hmm. Rod, I would add that there are new, new, con all kinds of new flavors of transition lenses now. Like the ones I got are polarized, like my sunglasses. And I mentioned transition in the car. Also, they transition 35% faster than traditional transition lenses. So that phenomenon you were mentioning about going inside and still being dark it's not as much of an issue oh it sounds amazing I, I mean like i said i do it about once every three to five years so it's about time for me to get transitions again and i normally try to pick a frame that will look cool as sunglasses as well as um regular glasses so i might be doing that this year we'll see i missed the days and all i needed was contacts and some good sunglasses mm-hmm uh, let's see. Amber says, "Hey, Rod and Karen, love y'all. Sorry, this is late as fuck. Uh, while I share similar sentiments regarding the Congressional Hip Hop Task Force, I can speak a little about the BMAC, which is the Black Music Action Coalition, which Willie Prophet Stiggers organizes. Uh, because I was like, what's the BMAC? Yeah, to remind mm -hmm. me, it's been a while. 
to keep it short, they've been doing a lot in terms of mentorship and guaranteed income programs for up and coming black and brown artists across the country. I'm personally part of this year's CGI and mentorship program put on by BMAC in partnership with the Rock Hall of Fame, which is giving me 1K tax free a month for the next 12 months in addition to mentorship with industry execs. Last year, CGI was actually partnered with the ACM. I don't know what that means. American Country Music, maybe. And fo future focused on black artists who are in country music. Oh, oh okay, cool. Was right, yeah. Uh, well, before Carter, well before Cowboy Carter was even a thought in the public's eye. I've seen them help launch careers of a bunch of my peers, as well as push the labels, publishing companies, and talent agencies here in Nashville to pay attention to black artists. They're definitely doing good and impactful work, but as you mentioned with, with the Congressional Hip Hop Task Force, my hope is that there's work happening behind the scenes that is impactful as everything I'm seeing with the BMAC specific initiatives. Yeah, I, I wasn't questioning so. that man's integrity or whatever. I don't know enough about him to even be like that. I just have to wonder in that scenario um, about the hip hop task force because they you can put someone's name on something and not call them back. Like it don't make him the hustler if the if they're like we took a photo op, we're done here. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I haven't heard anything else about it. And now Jamal Bowman, I think is out of a job as far as Congress person. So uh. we'll see from there. Right. MF Steven says one more thing since this most recent episode was so on point and thought provoking it's times like this it becomes more and more apparent that most people have never read a history of political science book and if they did they had no idea what the fuck they were looking at here's the deal people there's an army of GOP attorneys ready to attack the candidacy of anyone who replaces Biden. GOP judges can't wait to remove a replacement candidate from the ballot. Four months out, it will send a party into turmoil that will be unrecoverable. You pull Biden and Harris off the ticket, you might as well put a crown of, of on the orange minutes and give him a scepter. Meanwhile, the fact that they are just as actively trying to get Kamala up out the paint when really if Biden goes anywhere, that job should be hers, should tell you exactly what the agenda is. These people are not to be taken seriously. This is a bullshit power grab by opportunists opportunists like my pops used to say don't fall for the okie doke yeah i've yeah i won't i'll say less uh <laughs> yeah and people yeah. are like it's a simple it's not simple i'm i and honestly i'm a little worried that even if it was kamala harris there would be people f trying to find some type of legal way that it can't be her right. and there's definitely gonna be democratic infighting because like i said there's a lot of people who just won't say why they don't like her Right, but they just don't, and she's unlikable, and she can't win, so it can't be her. But why? To explain to me, like a five. Democratic Party still has to recover from Bobby getting his brain brains blown out. Jesus, and Muskie dropping out the race fifty years ago. You pull Biden and Harris is effectively going to destroy what's left of the party, which I believe is part of the agenda as well. With all we've seen, how can it not be? They sure aren't doing anything to ensure survival, seemingly just the opposite in fact. Yeah, let me actually you reminded me of one more point I want to make. So everything the Democrats do until they win is always something, something. This is what's wrong with the Democrats. OK, and I'm and I want to point this out because it's going to matter a lot. It, what, whatever happens, if they win with Biden, suddenly everybody that was saying they shouldn't have did those tweets and all that, that shit will go away like it never happened mm -hmm. you know they'll be so relieved that they won but they won't say damn i really was wrong when i, I said they should give the up problem. and they and that they're fucking up when i was like openly saying they are they are fundamentally giving away the presidency by not just stepping down those people will shut the fuck up they won't they won't apologize they won't even admit they were wrong because we saw that happen with biden biden won Motherfuckers did not come out and go, God damn, I was wrong. I don't know what the, why I said he couldn't win. He, he clearly beat Trump. I Sorry. Nobody said that. Okay. The second thing is, whatever the Democrats are doing is always considered the wrong thing. Yep. Show me a time when people are like, yeah, Democrats are doing the right thing. They're the party that gets blamed no matter what. And I, like I said, I can hear a reasonable explanation to do a bunch of things, but what I'm not really hearing is anybody that will admit like well what they were doing at this time was right they're never right according to y'all when it was obama it wasn't right for some reason when it was biden it wasn't right when it was clinton it wasn't right it's never fucking right when they get big wins when they get mind-blowing legislation plan plan uh passed that everyone said could not happen no one goes well they did that right they did a good job it's always something wrong something missing something that could have been done better 
I'm just sick of that. I'm a pragmatist. I'm a realist. I don't I don't need to feel good about any of this shit. Mm-hmm. So and, and honestly, I don't need to feel good about y'all feeling good about it. Come on. You know what I mean? At this point, I'm like, cool. Complain is part of it on our side. Now, you might be upset that I don't take it seriously and I'm not placating to it, but I'm sorry. Y'all never shut the fuck up. I've never seen y'all happy. Right. So I, I'm sorry, but I have to just live my life. Uh, Democratic Party still hasn't. Oh, yeah, he said that part. Um, let's see. Uh, you, da, da, da. Um, with all we've seen, how can that be? You, they sure aren't doing anything to ensure survival. Seem, seemingly, there's just the opposite. In fact, yeah. All right, there you go. Uh, next one, Miss Walker says, I can't figure out how to leave a five star rating and comment on Apple Podcast thing. Please leave me instructions if you can. Thank you. Karen, what do you think? To leave a review on Apple Podcasts, you go to any Apple device and type in the black guy who tips in your podcast app, and we should pop up. Up at the top, you should, it just, there should be a button that said leave a review. You click it, you should be able to leave a five star review and do a comment. Just note that Apple has rules. So, certain cuss words, certain things, it won't let you post, but you won't know it won't be posted and it won't tell you it's not posted. It just won't post. Period. If you are, uh, and sometimes it is, sometimes it could be a delay. Like you leave it and we might not see it for a week or two. And you can do this anywhere in the world that allows you to leave uh, five star reviews through Apple. Like I said, it's any any Apple device uh, that uh, you can have. You have access to the podcast app. If you are a non Apple user, you go, I won't leave them a five star review, but I don't fuck with Apple. Cool, 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 cool. Go to iTunes.com, create an Apple account. And once you create that account, you can leave us a five-star review. You don't need to sign up for nothing, Apple. You don't need to buy nothing, Apple. You ain't got to bite the Apple. Apple don't give a fuck. Just make your ass an account, and then you can leave us a five-star review. You can also leave us five-star reviews if you are listening to us through Spotify. You cannot write anything, but you can actually leave us a five-star review. So if you're on your uh, Spotify device, you can actually follow us so that when we go live, not live, but when we do a show, you will get notified through the app that a show has been posted. But you can also click and leave us at, leave us five stars. And we will see those five stars because we see like how many people have actually left us five stars. And so if you want to leave us a five-star review through uh, Spotify, remember you can't write anything, but Apple, you can write something. You can do that through those manners. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to more five star reviews because you know, I get sad when we don't get them. I really do, y'all. Because I was, I look, you know, because you look at the downloads and number of people, you go, Oh, all these people haven't left five star review, but we love y'all. Y'all the best, y'all the greatest, the best podcast ever. When, when y'all doing the live show, why, why, why don't you do us a t shirt? Roger, we can't wait for the next Game of Thrones. Leave us, put, put five on it. And you know what? If you already left one, leave one again. Free up it because we've had people who, who actually said, I left one, I'm going to leave one again. We don't mind you giving us 10 stars. We are here for it. And on top of that, y'all know y'all got family members that have access to Apple. Blog on their accounts. Leave us a five-star review. We don't care. We just want the reviews. There you go. Um, so it's, you can also Google it. Like, mm-hmm. like they'll tell you ways to leave five star reviews. Yeah, YouTube. Uh, whether YouTube you have a walk- Mac, PC, or iPhone, it'll let you know. Yeah, YouTube has videos, and I've seen them before. They would actually walk you step by step on what to do. The next one is House of the Dead feedback from a mom who says, "Hey, Rod and Karen, I hope this makes it in time for the show." Uh, one, yes, I did mean Prince in my last email. Predictive text always tries to do me dirty, but that's my fault for not proofreading. Anyway, y'all did a fantastic recap episode. Everything y'all covered was something I was thinking while watching the show. And honestly, y'all are way more fun than some of these Facebook groups because I asked in two different groups why Raina didn't just claim a dragon, especially with Sea Smoke being right there. I would think after taking her space to be salty at AA Mom for stealing her mom's dragon, she'd take it as a challenge to go seek out a dragon on her own like her mom did. I would love to see that. But of course, the folks in the Facebook groups got all technical with it. And I said to myself, this is supposed to be fun. I see what Ryder Karen be talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them people, I was excited, they make it not fun. Yeah, I hate to keep harping on this, but yo, this is why I don't talk to nobody. Nope. Some people are dicks about this shit. I just don't like, like, fandom as a general 
thing can be fun. Yes, it can. And and all that, but just my general temperament, I ain't meant for it because I feel strongly about things. I'm a little too funny, a little too sassy, and people mm-hmm. feelings be so tight. Yes, it does. I, and I and it's just supposed to be entertainment. And so I everyone can't be a person that can talk to me about this stuff. Mm-mm. And I get it. I I, I I I you know, I wouldn't want to talk to my opinionated ass either. You know, <laughs> I feel how I feel. I think I know fucking everything. And when I don't know shit, I'm always like surprised happily and have fun with it. It's not too serious for me, right. but man, people take this stuff so serious and it's just, I take the work of making it fun for, for us and y'all serious, but I don't take the show serious. It's still a fucking nerd show about dragons. Yes! Everybody got calmed down. Anyway, I was shocked by the head scene in the brothel. I didn't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen a show head given from that angle before. Yeah, I, I don't think I have either. Mm-mm. I mean, it's, it's very, I mean, honestly, it was cartoonish with how it was big so the over dick the, was. Yes, it was so over the top. I was like, oh, that got to be a prosthetic. Yeah, it felt like someone just bought a dildo from like the, 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 the um, Victoria, not Victoria's Secret, the, whatever secret, y'all know mm-hmm. the one I'll be talking about. That that sh- that that shop that's in everybody's town on the black side of town in the strip mm-hmm. mall, um, but it's like Veronica's secret or some shit. But whatever they, someone went there, bought the biggest dildo and just put it in someone's pants and pretended that it was a dick because it did not seem real to me. It just felt it did not seem real. It felt like it wasn't supposed to hold up the scrutiny. Like it's just supposed to be like oh prosthetic dick and then move on. But we were just supposed to be shocked that like oh my god, sucking dick, mm-hmm. but. I don't know. I'm desensitized. I live in a world where pornography is on everyone's phone. It's, I, I don't know what they would need to show me on an actual TV show for me to be like, God damn. <laughs> right? You know, I almost envy the humble innocence of people like J.L. Covan who can be like, wow, this actress, they showed her boobs and my God. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. I, all right. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've seen. I have seen too much. Yes. Yeah. I mean, listen. I just if I want to see some boobs, I can just go to my Reddit. It's right there. Right you know, there. The specific kinds and everything. Any yeah. kind you want. All if types just, of terminology. Listen, big black areolas. I promise you, it's out there. Yeah. Yes. It, if you want them, yes, it is. I promise you, it's out there. There's no need. It's it's fine. Brown areolas is out there too. It's out there. I don't know about white, but it's probably out there. It's, if you want it, it's out there. If, it, if you into it. So I, I don't know that a TV show is ever going to make me be like, God damn, these mother... Like, we've all seen real sex. Who cares? Like, do the, do the acting and shit. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but it's just... Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I don't know what it would take for me to truly clutch my pearls at this point. I true. Anyways, I was also shocked by the head scene. Da, da, da. Uh, especially when you see it going in and out someone's mouth. Usually it's from an angle where you just know that it's happening, but yeah. you don't necessarily see anything. At least to me, it was more shocking than Amon scene just seconds later. Uh, y'all didn't miss a beat this episode. Excited about the next one. Love them on. Yeah, it was one of those things. I was like, oh, that's what we're doing. That was kind of my response. Like, yeah. Oh, I think that was the response we were supposed to have. It was like, oh, shit. Y- yeah, I was like, oh, dick. Okay. Yeah. Like it was, it wasn't supposed. I don't think it was supposed to like. I don't, yeah, I don't think it was just supposed to be a big deal. Honestly, the only thing missing from that scene was. What's up, girl? Uh, I'm sucking dick right now. Let me call you right back. <laughs> That's all that was missing. Hey, you right? Uh, let's see. John Wright said, "My chart, Biden, etc." Good morning, Rod and Karen. One thing that is really great about my charges last year, my wife was managing the decline of her two elderly parents in Texas from here in L.A. She needed to keep close tabs on her status and her parents weren't always reliable about relaying the information from doctors. Every time there was a visitor procedure, she would jump online and read the actual reports in the doctor's note for follow up. Mm-hmm. Reporting in from white liberal progressive spaces, I would say that it's definitely mostly white people who are freaking out and trying to force conversations about replacing Biden. Yes. I, yeah. The other thing that I'm going to throw out there, and this isn't a judgment, but this is just what I see happening. Uh, the other thing that's happening, and it, the Palestinian thing became this for some folks too, not everybody, but some people that just never were happy with Biden think it's an opportunity to get him out the paint. Mm-hmm. And so there's people trying to act like that debate was just it's so bad he has to go and I'm like you scroll down a page and you see they've been asking for Biden to go from day one. They 
they don't fuck with him. Right. They've always wanted a different person in office, mm -hmm. even with his accomplishments and it being his uh, his administration. They would like someone, and and it's very telling. They would like someone to run on the Biden accomplishments, but not be Joe Biden. And it just that tells you a lot about how those people think. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, it's kind of like the person that fucking uh, did the, the person that killed the deer eat first, bro. You can't. You can't skip over the day the one that did it. Everybody else may have wanted to do it, but he the one that did it. Ideologically, it's a combination of centrist and progressive who always love the shit on the damn party and a lot of people who never liked Biden in the first place. Oh, you all over it. The good news is that it's a tiny amount of people and most of us are aggressively pushing back and telling these idiots to shut the fuck up with the citations for black Twitter and countless articles, threads explaining why. The media clearly wants to make this another emails, but I think too many of us actually learn. From 2016 to 2000, I'm ready to go vote trying to get information behind Biden. Here's what I think happened. And, and I don't mean to take away from, from your very positive spin on it, which is uh, I, I, hope, I would like to believe what you said is true. But here's what I think is happening. He an old white man. And so in the, in the time where people would have abandoned Hillary for the same shit, they would have abandoned anybody else. He could have got up there and drooled and motherfuckers at the end of the day are like, I guess, oh, I guess I'm going to vote for him. I sure am. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying it's, if, if he was anybody else, they'd be like, get him. It's out. It's over. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a discussion because we'd be like, it's over. But now, but because it's him, it's, oh, if he say he can run, I mean, I guess that's what we got to do. It's crazy. Yeah, that man made a Teflon. Rod, get the right, Rod was right music ready. While you only, while you only mentioned the immunity ruling briefly, my first thought was, so all that fucking pearl clutching about Garland was complete bullshit because the Supreme Court always had this big joker in their hand and they were going to play it however they could to push any trials until after the election. Garland could have dropped the indictment moment the moment he was sworn in and SCOTUS could have dragged all this out, this all out for three years. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, you know what? I'll play the ride was right music or, you know what? Nah, this is a different type of, right? This is that, that angry, right? That I'd be having. So I'm gonna play this one. I've been right about all of it. We've been right about all of it. Woo! Yes. Yes. Yeah. Man, I'm not happy to be right about that shit, but it's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. You know. Anyway, I'm glad that Jack Smith and and Merrick and all these people are still trying to get them. But it, you know, this this Supreme Court insurance plan is highly ironic. It's highly ironic that um. It's highly ironic that what ultimately will protect him is people's apathy in 2016 and their lack of vigilance. Yes. And you can't get that back. Nope. That's the, and that's why I'm on your asses. Don't care. Don't care. I'm on your motherfucking And the fact ass. that, that you motherfuckers are tired of us bringing it up, I'm tired of living in it. Right! I got to live with the consequences of this bullshit! I'm tired of living with the consequences of your apathy when we knew the right thing to do. The vast majority of us that voted knew what the right thing to do was. So yeah, I don't want to hear it from from y'all. Don't want that we're it. wrong, and then refuse to admit you're wrong, or think we should go back to act treating you like an authority on shit years later after you were just dead ass wrong. Mm -mm. No, shut the fuck up, or just take this take these comments because we don't have to like you. You ain't gotta like us. But I damn sure am, 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 am upset that I'm living through this time you put us in. You did this. You know? And no, not as much as the Republicans and shit like that. I, I absolutely get it. But the, to be honest, Republicans never guilt tripped me. They never harassed me. They never was in my mentions. They didn't write emails. They didn't harass uh, me on social media. They didn't leave messages for me, vi our voicemail. You know, they didn't infiltrate our Facebook group and say hateful bullshit. None of them. So to be honest, they mostly left me the fuck alone. They hate my black ass and they went and voted a, a, accordingly and they don't pretend to be on my side in any single way. Right. But a motherfucker that'll dap me up and be like, I'm on your side. And when I turn around, they one of the motherfuckers that's watching me get jumped. Mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We don't operate the same, baby. And you don't need to be over here. 
it ain't cool. We ain't never going to be cool. Really. Until you can step back to that table and go, I was wrong. And I learned my lesson. And now I'm 10 toes down. We fucking riding on these people. Because if not, y'all weak willed and y'all just going to do the shit again. Yep. So I can't count you on my side, fam. Uh, Rod, your, du- your dubbing of BBL Chrissy was damn prophetic. Uh, he turned into Drake so fast with that bitch queen shit. I was ready for him to throw in some free Tory Lanez diss tracks. Oh, no. And Damien, man, he was giving some real Bernie bro 2016 energy with his argument that people would never allow a woman to lead. Like, I'm not sexist, but you know everyone else is, sweetie. I'm surprised he didn't mention right now his emails. Funny thing about West Coast <laughs> and this show is it has me so cold that when that twin got killed in the fight, it wasn't clear which one it was. I thought, well, I guess the other one got to die too because that's just how it works in Game of Thrones. Makes us all cold-blooded. Loving the recaps. No one will ever top them. Oh, wait. That's just a compliment, not a prediction. I beg your mercy, my legions. <laughs> P.S. Since Karen being so prudish on Tali Amory, I think the best idea for your candle making class is just to bring an inflatable sex doll with you. Cheers, John. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Can't wait to make the news with that shit. <laughs> All right, that's it for this episode. We'll be back. We may or may not do an episode tomorrow. It doesn't uh, depend. Yeah, so to go hang out with some people coming in from out of town for a little bit, and then it'll depend on how we feel that afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's it, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's it, too. Yeah, shout out to us being on the Inflation Network, iHeartRadio. We love it. Um, shout out to Michael Smith and everybody over there. Uh, can't wait to see what all we do with them. And, uh, yeah, until next time, I love you. I love you, too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest.